Okay, good morning. Let me hear your voice. Good morning. Okay, let me introduce myself. My name is Melody O. Young. I'm a speech manager at CAC Hospital. It's very nice to see you today. Uh, it's a pleasure to participate in this program. Today, what I would like to talk about is ABC Love voice training. You will be wondering, what is the ABC Love voice training? This just happened when I was treating a lot of head and neck cancer patients. I've been here for 17 years. We started a program and tried to focus on, actually focus on swallowing training, right? But it's a, when you do the swallowing training therapy, but also voice is very important. So this is a byproduct of when I'm doing the swallowing training, happen to be the, well, also treating the voice. So ABC Love is abbreviation for A is awareness. You have to be aware of your voice problem. What's going on with your voice, right? B is the breathing. Wherever you talk, you swallow, and also using the voice, you must have a good breath support, okay? Breathing is very important. Number three is counsel, uh, counseling. You have to know what you are going to have it, right? You have to, uh, we have to train the patient how to protect their voice, education. Number four, L, L is the laryngeal manipulation. You, you, you will know that during the radiation or after radiation, your larynx is very tough because we call it fibrosis, right? We can prevent that. Dr. Koka mentioned about swallowing therapy, but the most important thing is early intervention. When you are having the treatment, for you it's very important, you have to manipulate your larynx, make that tissue soft, increase the blood flow in that area. So laryngeal manipulation is very key for the head and neck cancer patient in terms of voice and swallowing. And also O, O is oral resonance. What is oral resonance? Oral resonance is in the mask area. When you wear the mask, that's the most the sound, the appropriate sounds resonant in this area. So we are using the oral resonance, try to vibrate in the vocal cords, make the vocal cords is moving harmoniously. That's very important. And also release the tension in the vocal cords. So oral resonance is also the key component. Another one is the vocal function. Once you relax the vocal cords, what do you do? You need to stretch your vocal cords, right? How do you stretch the vocal cords? The only thing we have is using what? Sound. Later, I will show you how to use the sound to do the stretching, moving up and moving down. When you're moving up, moving down, your larynx is vibrating and moving up and moving down, then you will produce beautiful voice and also release the tension, especially for the head and neck cancer patient. All right, then finally, elimination. Of course, during the treatment, you will see dryness. You will feel a lot of cough. You will feel it's very a gravy voice. How do you resonate there? You have to have a good vocal habit, right? You need to sip of water, hydrating your vocal cords so you won't get uh, Dryness in the vocal cord. So it's the whole comprehension, complete, is called a ABC voice training. Now, of course, whenever you put together, is we make the voice beautiful. So that's what I want you to do, is, is introduction of the novel voice treatment. And uh, it's especially, this is a good for the head and neck cancer patient, okay? So everybody knows about that, that dysphonia in head and neck cancer patient is like a mucositis. What is mucositis during the radiation? You feel the ulceration in your mouth. When you have an ulceration in your mouth, you have a lot of sick saliva in your mouth. You don't want to talk. But if you don't talk, you don't phonate, your vocal cords will become an atrophy. Nobody will tell you about it. Is the therapist always say, okay, you, even though you are in pain, but you can use oral resonance, try to mobilize in your vocal cords, mucositis. Lymphedema, if you have swollen in here, also during the radiation, lymphedema, the occupational therapy will help you to drain 
the lymphedema, but at the same time, you also have a well to phony. And also, uh, xerostomia, that means what? Dry mouth. If you have a dry mouth, how can you talk? How can you voice? So you have to sip of your water constantly, okay? And also acute chronic pain. When you are in pain, you, we, everybody experiences pain. When you are in pain, you scream. What does that mean with your whole course? When you are in pain, your larynx is very tight. Does it make sense? Oh, I'm very painful. So what does that mean? Your larynx elevate, your tension on your vocal cords. So you need to do the voice therapy, try to relax your vocal cords. And also fatigue. You always feel fatigue. You don't want to talk. We always saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. Everything is like that. Life is the same thing. When we are aging, if you don't lose, if you do exercise, you lose it, right? That's normal aging. How about head and neck cancer patient? Even worse if you don't do this, those exercises, okay? Fibrosis, I talk about, is the hardening of the, your muscle because of collagen is, I mean, the first thing I say, radiation is like that. You put one piece of meat into the microwave. First thing to go is what? The fat. So fibrosis is that after radiation, the fat in your neck is kind of diminished. Then what? Then your vocal cords become very tight. Okay, and the vocal, vocal cords fixation. I have some patient is that before the radiation, the cancer treatment, vocal cords are doing still well, but after the cancer treatment, vocal cords fixed. One is not moving. So there's also some side effect of that one. So we want to prevent that. When you're constant doing the exercises, the vocal cord will keep a good shape, okay? And you also, another one is a change in blood or cervical posture. You can see the posture, okay? Whenever you're doing the radiation, you can see, I give you the mucositis. That's the mucositis. Lymphedema, you see how fat is the, the cervical area, the cheek area. How can you talk? How can you speak at that time? It's very hard. But when you come to therapy, the, the therapist is like your champion. You have to do it. Do it. I, I know that. Uh, I mean, we, we still have a lot of previous uh, patients of mine. They will say, Melody, you are the drill sergeant. You are very tough. But I think I'm tough because I, I want you to make a change. It's not me. I'm just like a coach for you, guide you through. But you have to do the work. I know it's very painful, but you have to go through it. I will help you, help you to push through this very critical period. And then later on, you will thank me because you are going to eat, you are going to talk nicely, okay? This also mentioned of the before radiation and after radiation. You can see the vocal cords are not coming together. If the vocal, one vocal cord is not coming together, what does that mean? You will hear the leaking of the air with the vocal cord. You are talking like this, hi, <sighs> because the vocal cords are not coming together. When we talk, vocal cords are coming together. How about this one, posture? Because radiation always focus on the, your front, so your body posture become changed, okay, become very stiff. If you have a poor body posture, I guarantee you, you cannot eat very well and you cannot speak very well. So the physical therapy is also very important. We just did a stretching. You, I hope you will feel more relaxed after only five minutes stretching, right? So body posture is also very important. So when we're doing this, I, I have facing the, such a challenge so many years ago. I want to do the best for my patient, but I look at all the literature, current therapy for voice, basically just, uh, okay, increase glottal competency, just vocal cord, uh, oral resonance. Okay, that's good. And also increase the front focus. Easy for nation, that means a front focus. Mm, 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 mm. Using the front focus, release the tension, okay? Also, decrease the vocal tension, use the laryngeal manipulation. But those uh, techniques always separate for the different disorders. When I'm facing the head and neck cancer patient, it's multiple challenges. It's not just one thing. So how do I put everything together? 
That's the reason I come up with ABC love, okay? You have to be awareness of your problem, okay? You have to be constant, have a good uh, breast support. Sometimes the breast support is kind of diminished. I want to cre increase your breast support. I also want you to know what to do it, not just I'm teaching you at this time. You have to do it at home, right? And also, how do you do the laryngeal manipulation? How do you correctly? You will see your voice change after you're doing the laryngeal manipulation and also using the oral resonance. How do you use the oral resonance? Okay? And also vocal function. All right? Then elimination your bad habit or inappropriate habit. Keep the water with you all the time. So don't feel when you are dry already. That's already too much. You have to sip water, make it some more moisture. Okay, so this is the whole comprehensive treatment for voice. Of course, when we do the voice uh, a treatment, we follow the same protocol. We do the, uh, first we want to see the vocal cords before the treatment. How the vocal cords doing? Is there any gap in the vocal cords? Okay, we are using uh, visit pitch, the special equipment, try to measure your maximum phonation time. What is the maximum for phonation time? It's like I was saying, uh, how long you can sustain it. Because the longer you sustain it, you have an ability to support whatever you are talking. Maximum phonation time is very important. And rap, rap is hoarseness. The machine will let me know what's the percentage of your hoarseness. Usually it should be less than 1%. But a lot of patients after radiation or during the radiation, their voice will be 2.5. Very hoarse. Okay, and now uh, also we are using the voice handicap or cap, the measurement to, to measure you before the treatment because uh, it's very important. We want to have a baseline, then after the treatment, we can compare, right? So you know the progression of the therapy. Then, so those are the factors. So you can see that we have a patient, you can see we compare the before and after you can see the oral, that that's the maximum phonation time. You can see different categories of okay, oral pharynx. They started with the maximum phonation maybe only one second. That means whenever I say, please say ah, ah, then gone. But after treatment, they have a 12 seconds. Ah, that can be trained. So you can see that significant improvement. So in different category, the maximum phonation time, that means that the breath support for you to make a voice, to speak, is much better, much longer after the treatment, okay? That's one category. Another one is the voice handicap index. That means before the treatment, how much you suffer from the voice impairment. You cannot communicate with your friends. Whenever you are talking on the phone, people cannot hear you. Okay, but the, the higher the score, the more handicap, handicap you have. But after the treatment, you can see it much reduced. You can see that, so that's an improvement. Another one is rap. What is rap? The hoarseness. How hoarse you are when you're saying words, or you're phonating. You can see also before was very high, it's like a 2.15, then after the treatment is also lower. So you can see in different categories, patients all improve after receiving the ABC Love voice training. And pitch range, what is the pitch range? Is if I want you to say starting from low pitch to high pitch, say do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, do. Okay, without the voice changes. But a lot of times we call limited pitch range, we mean, there's a flat, okay? So what you do is we want to improve the voice pitch change, range. That means your voice is more flexible. That's the key. You want it where you want the voice to go. They will go with you. Not say, how are you? How are you? I get, get out, get out, okay? So voice has to be more flexible. That means indicated by the pitch range. 
So conclusion is ABC Love Voice training appeared to be very effective. We talk about it effective for head and neck cancer patient, but key words, early intervention improved voice outcome. Early swallowing treatment improved the swallowing outcome. Everything should be early. What do we mean early? We have study about early intervention is you have to do everything intervention within the six months period. Once you have a diagnosis with head and neck cancer patient and the radiation, you have to do the intervention within the six months. Because after six months, a lot of side effects accumulated. You don't prevent that. They were getting worse and worse. So it's the key is early intervention, okay? Of course, after this one, uh, we published a paper in 2015. That's a long time with uh, collaboration, with help with Dr. Sinha, with the, his team. We published this paper in 12, 12, 2015. But after that, I'm using the same approach for different disorders, all create a positive outcome. So that's very, very important. So right now, what I would like you to do is just have you to experience a little bit about what is a voice, ABC love voice intervention. I want you to do first one is uh, laryngeal manipulation, it's very important. You want to position your larynx in the right place. What do you do is, you can see it from your lower chin going down, you will feel there's Adam's apple, right? The Adam's apple, you use your hand, index and thumb, and encircle the thyroid cartilage. Feel that the biggest bone in your throat? And I want you to gently move it back and forth. When you're moving back and forth, and I want you to say, mum, 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 mum. Okay, let's do it together. Ready, go. Mum, 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 mum. Mum, 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 mum. Let me hear you. Mum, 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 mum. So, if you have a difficulty in phonating, this is the number one. You have to move your larynx, try to improve your larynx uh, closing together and humming. That will increase your volume. Mum, 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 mum. Mum, 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 mum. That's a laryngeal manipulation. So prepare you to phonate. That's a laryngeal. Another one is the oral resonance. My very basic uh, oral resonance exercise, we call the vocal aerobics. Now let me show you how to do it. First one, you have to phonate using oral res resonance using M sound. Mum, 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 mum. I want you to do five, okay? When you do this, pretending you are wearing the mask, you have to project your voice out. Resonance is a, 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 a produced in the oral resonance area. Okay, then you say, mum, 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 everybody, go. Mum, 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 go. Number three, go. Number four, go. Number five, go. Very good, right? Now the second one is changing slow and fast. Mum, 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 mum. Ready? Go. Mum, 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 mum. Number two. <laughs> Number three, go. Number four, go. The last one. Very good, everybody doing beautifully. The third one is choir and projector. It will be like this. Mum, 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 mum. Mum, 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 low and high. Even though when you are low, you still focus in the oral area, the mask area. Okay, let's try it. Ready? Go. Mum, 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 mum. Good. Mum, 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 mum. Out. Number three. Number four. The last one. After this one, this is already warming up your, your vocal cords already. Now, try to remember, after warming up, you want to stretch. Stretch, we call vocal function exercise. How do you stretch? 
using W-H-O-O-P. The P, you have to hold it. So I will demonstrate. Take a breath. Whoop. See? You will feel your larynx tight at the end. Hold it, that P. Let me hear you. Ready? Go. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. You feel that it's tightness of your vocal cords, especially on the P? Okay? That's called a stretching. I'm using the sound to stretch your vocal cords. Another one, after stretching, you want to release the tension. That will be from the top. Going down, it's like a ski. Okay? How do you do it? Using B O O M. Boo! Let me hear you. Ready? Go! Good! There's no pitch breaks, so everybody's voice is on, right on target. Very good. Number two, go! Number three, go! Number four, go. Number five, go. So after stretching, after relaxing, you want to stabilize it. Then you say, do, re, mi, fa, so, go. Do, re, mi, fa, so. Oh. oh. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Five, one. Project. One. Two, Two, three, three four, 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 five. five. Everybody's doing beautifully. Thank you. I would like to take this chance to thank you, Dr. Singha, Dr. Koka, and Dr. Mark Swanson, and Dr. Brenda Viegas for this wonderful opportunity to present to you today. Thank you. <laughs>